Hey everyone, I'm back with another video and this time I'm going to see if I can replace my entire work setup with European software. If you haven't seen my last video about European alternatives, I would definitely recommend you watching it, maybe even before this one, because there I talked about some of the essential US digital product alternatives and I also go more into the reasons for switching to European alternatives. A little update from the previous videos, since that time I have been using Vivaldi browser a lot with Ecosia set up as my default search engine. I do check Mastodon from time to time, I haven't posted anything there, but I love their new section. And since I already have those guys I mentioned in my previous video, it can be a little bit overwhelming to keep track of so many social media platforms. I've also been using Sync, the job searching platform because I'm in the middle of a job search but I have to say 90% of the jobs there are for German speakers so if you're in Germany and you speak German it's perfect but for now it's not very international. On the language and translating side I absolutely love DeepL and Traverso. I'm currently learning German so it's helping me a lot to translate and to find synonyms and contextual information. The only occasions when I look for Google Translate is um, when I have to translate a picture. For music I still primarily use Spotify. I know they have a lot of issues. <laughs> so I try to go to SoundCloud whenever I can, especially if I'm on my laptop. And as for streaming, I almost never go to Netflix. So Mobi has been my favorite for a long time. Messaging wise, I'm not using Threema or any other European messaging apps because there's literally no one I could talk to. Um, but as I mentioned before, I do use Signal regularly, as well as Telegram for certain projects and groups that I'm part of. Not exactly European, but they will do for now. Okay, now let's get into the main topic, which is, can we actually work using only European software? I tested a full work setup with only European alternatives to products like Google Docs, Notion, Zoom, Slack, and more. So let's go category by category. Starting with Docs and Notion alternatives. So I'll be looking at knowledge management and collaboration tools similar to Google Docs or Notion. And some of the most highly rated ones that I found are Capacities from Germany. It's a structured knowledge management tool, kind of like Notion, but with better organization for long-term knowledge storage. Then we have Fibery from Estonia. It's great for teams because it combines documents, databases, and project management in one place. Then there's Tana from Norway, a next generation note taking tool mixing elements of Rome Search and Notion. And finally, Nuclino from Germany. It's a lightweight Notion alternative focused on real time collaboration. So, based on just the overview of these products, I would say that if we're looking for personal knowledge management tools, then Tana and Capacities would be great options. But then, if you work in a team, then Fibery and Nuclino. Clino would be better suited for you. Well, since I do not have a production team, you might not believe me, but yeah, there are no sound or light guys behind the camera. Even though I'm sure some of you believe me. <laughs> So because of that, I find capacities quite interesting, but I'll also take a look at Fibery for you guys because I've read a lot of good reviews about Fibery. So here is capacities. They have an object-based organization and different types of objects from projects to meetings to trips and places and pages. It allows you to take notes for every day and organize the day. So for example, on March 15th, maybe I want to write a new video script. I can add more things, for example, Maybe I've done some research and I want to add a report that I've read and I think would be useful for my video. They even have an AI chat. I can create my own types of objects. So, so far, I think I could get behind this. Definitely the structure is something to get used to, but it seems pretty simple and I could definitely see myself using this also for project planning. And then let's take a quick look also at Fibery. So as you can see at the beginning, when you're just creating your account, it asks you what you're creating it for. So let's say if it's a digital agency, it says that it has templates for CRM, project management, time logging and finances. If it's a startup, then it helps with strategy, customer discovery, road mapping, hiring, etc. Let's choose digital agency. I love the design and the colors. So here you already have a template for a digital agency. You have a projects planning tool and it's great. You don't need Excel or any other extra tool to create projects, to plan projects and even gives you infographics on the time spent per project. You have a task list here and also an inbuilt CRM interface. I could see how it could work pretty well for a small company and you have a 14 day trial. So you get to see whether it works for the team or not. And also I have to say Tana seems like a great tool as well. 
Again, you have the freedom of creating your own interface and it can be used both personally and for organizations. And I also have to mention Anytype from the Netherlands. It's a privacy focused Notion alternative and I believe they only still have the beta version. I love the idea behind it. It's very similar to Notion. You can do so many things there. You can have a calendar or a group calendar. You can plan trips for family, have your daily journal there or a recipe book or even use it for blogging. I love the focus on privacy. Really cool. And then if you're looking for a simpler, more privacy focused alternative for sharing and editing documents, then there's ScriptPad, which I have experience using as well. I would say that the design is very simple, but it does the job very well and it's fully encrypted and the encrypted data is hosted in Germany. So again, it's EU based. So another great alternative to consider for the future. All of them have free basic subscription. And I would say that the prices seem pretty fair to me. So amazing. So far, the one that stands out the most for me is capacities. Okay, next, let's find some meeting and video call alternatives to Zoom, Teams, Google Meets, etc. I already know one digital product from Germany that offers these services and it's called SendCall. It's fully open source, there's no registration required, and it is privacy friendly. But apart from that, I found some more alternatives. For example, Whereby from Norway, which is super simple. There are no downloads required and they also have a free plan. Then we also have Jitsi Meet, which is an open source EU friendly software. It's fully private and has a self hostable video call option. And finally, there's Vowel, which is UK based, it has US ties. So that's something to keep in mind. I'll show you in a minute, but I love the interface of Whereby. I think it's really cool, but also, as I mentioned, self-call is amazing for privacy conscious users. And the same goes for Jitsi. Okay, here you can see me. We have a chat with reactions. You can share your screen, record. I like it. I love the colors. And then I'll also quickly show you SendCall. With SendCall, it's really easy again to create a room. You don't need to register. Just put your name and you're in the meeting room. Here is the interface. It has all the explanations of how to use everything. I would say that the user interface is much nicer with Whereby. But again, if you're concerned about privacy, SendCall is the software to go for. Okay, moving on, let's look at some Slack alternatives for team chats and collaboration. As I said, I do not have a team behind this. I know it's super hard to believe, but yeah. <laughs> but I thought it would be important to review for some of you. So for team communication, we have alternatives like Mattermost. It's open source self-hostable and provides EU-friendly deployment. Then we have Element from France slash UK, and it's based on the decentralized metrics protocol, and it's great for security. Finally, we have Rocket Chat from Germany. It's an open source alternative that companies can host themselves. So Element is probably the best if you care about privacy, while Rocket Chat and Mattermost are good if you need something Slack-like. So looking at Element, I quite like their user interface. You can add people here, you can send direct messages and create rooms. And this is Mattermost. Again, I would say it has a pretty good design. Overall, I would imagine it would be pretty easy to switch to one of these alternatives. The next digital product is super important because it's emails. I don't know about you, but Gmail is deeply ingrained into my life because every single account for any digital product that I have is linked to my Gmail, it can be extremely difficult to switch from it because obviously you don't want to change your email one by one for every single thing that you're using. While preparing for this video, I want to read more about people's experiences with switching to new email providers. One of the most famous alternatives that comes from Switzerland is Proton. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it as well. It's definitely the most well-known encrypted email service. Actually, uh, reading about different people's experiences with Proton, a lot of them mentioned that there's an an option to set up an email forwarding system so that when you switch to Proton, you will still keep receiving your emails from your Gmail account. And apart from that, we also have alternatives like Tutanota from Germany. I don't know how to pronounce it. Tutanota. It's similar to Proton, but has a built-in encrypted calendar, which is a great plus. Next, we have mailbox.org, again from Germany. It's a more business-oriented platform and a great alternative to Google Workspace. And finally, Infomaniac Mail from Switzerland which is a Swiss email and calendar service with strong privacy protections. But yeah, overall, I would say that we're not short of email service alternatives. Since my YouTube channel is pretty new, I can easily switch my Gmail account to ProtonMail for the sake of this video and for the sake of this channel. So as you can see, uh, ProtonMail offers advanced encryption, industry-leading spam protection, and protection from trackers. I really like the user interface of ProtonMail, and I would also say that it's pretty intuitive. So I think I could work with it. So after testing all of these tools, here's what 
what I found. First of all, we can definitely confirm that these EU alternatives offer stronger privacy protection compared to their US counterparts. Some tools like Proton, Whereby, Capacities are just as good as their US competitors. I can definitely see myself switching to Proton, which I already did for this YouTube channel. You can already see my new Proton email in the description. I will make sure to use Whereby whenever I have to organize meetings. I love their user interface. It looked really cool and was so simple to use. And I was looking for a project management tool that also has a calendar and many other things. And Capacities seemed amazing based on what I saw and it seemed very easy to use. So I think I might stick to it. And apart from that, as I mentioned, I already use SenfCall and CryptPad and some other software for different projects and groups that require more privacy. They do offer a strong encryption and data privacy protection. And we also saw that a lot of these European companies are focusing on decentralized and open source alternatives, which is amazing for the future. At the same time, of course, there are some downsides. Some of them might not have the most polished UI UX like Google or Notion. And some tools have limited versions compared to big tech alternatives. So answering the initial question of this video, is it actually possible to replace your entire work setup with EU alternatives? I would say absolutely yes. There are so many great products that offer the same, if not more, functions. And on top of that, they have strong encryption and data privacy protection. So it's only a win-win. And that's it for today. Are you already using any of these European alternatives? What do you think about them? What would you recommend? Maybe I missed something because it would be really hard to cover all of them. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my previous video on this topic. Bye!